The first talk we have is from Martin Robinson, who's a lecturer at the University of the West of England. Uh, he's also, also the author of Getting Started with Juice, and he developed the Plink, Plonk and Plank libraries for audio development. So, welcome Martin. Hello. Just to give a, a brief background of where I'm coming from, because that kind of relates to maybe why I came to Juice and why I use Juice, certainly in my teaching and in other work. Uh, originally I was a tr musician, so I did a degree in music and music technology, but you know, proper music as well as uh, music technology, um, a composer and so on. So I kind of came to programming through music technology and audio technology. So you could probably guess that you know, I probably use something like Max and Super Collider as well. I uh, used those for a number of years and in fact um, I actually learnt C through writing Max externals and if you've ever written Max externals you know that's probably a, a trial by fire especially when you're using Mac OS 9 and the debuggers don't work and you just have to guess why it broke. Came across Juice in 2008 uh, looking for something to use at UWE uh, in Bristol uh, to teach audio programming. Uh, downloaded it, fired up, uh, downloaded a basic breakpoint kind of thing that joined the lines together and you could move the points around. You could cross them over, it didn't really do that cleverly, but I basically made this thing that had points connected within 20, 30 minutes and I thought, this is the thing for me. So that's kind of how I came at Juice and I've been using it since in various ways. So what I want to talk about today is, just to give an overview, is using Juice to teach programming generally. So uh, we use it at, at UE to teach C++, but of course mainly through audio. But of course, as we've already seen in a number of talks today, some of the problems, well, of course, we've got to deal with the GUI as well as audio, and also the audio itself. But having used Juice, there's some other things that it's become useful to put it into, not necessarily to teach programming, but to make little examples, to use it to teach audio in more general terms. So I've got a few little apps I'll show later on that I use to illustrate certain concepts and so on, just generally in terms of kind of audio artifacts and that sort of thing. And also, it's a, because you can set it up so quickly, certainly with the introducer or producer, uh, even without the kind of real live coding, real-time live coding stuff, you can set an app up so quickly that if you want to test out a, a framework that's not juice-based, it's so quick to set an application up and just whack the framework into it, fire a few function calls at it, and test it out within a GUI app rather than having to work uh, on the console or to have to set up a complex native GUI and so on. So, of course, most of us probably forgotten how hard programming was to learn, but, you know, we have to recognize with students that it, it is hard. And, you know, our props come from a slightly different angle in that our students aren't computer science students, they're audio technology students who learn programming. So, in a sense, we come at it at a slightly different angle, and again, Juice makes it perfect for that. Of course, the mistake we make, perhaps, is that learning programming, the easy stuff is easy, actually, you know, stuff like, you know, what is a variable, the different number types, even the difference between uh, an integer and a float. I mean, I was talking about integers and floats to my 12-year-old daughter this week, um, actually trying to show her what, what, what the meaning of the joke at the, uh, in the adverts for Big Bang Theory is when it says nan divided by nan equals nan. And so I set up a little program that divided nan by nan, and it equals none. So stuff like loops, if you haven't seen it, then obviously it's none breads that they've got on the screen at the time. Stuff like loops, for loops, while loops, I mean, they're all easy stuff. Conditions, if this, if that, if else, blah, blah, blah. Even strings, calling functions, all very straightforward. But putting it into, obviously, a big application, certainly this doing audio, which is hard real time, as we heard certainly in Timur and Fabian's talk earlier on, certainly in the context of a plug-in where all sorts of stuff can go wrong, that's often the host's fault, then that's a completely other issue. So the algorithms we need to use, data structures, all that complex possibilities, non-trivial stuff, complex inheritance and composition to get the job done is 
is hard. So Juice helps with all of these things, not just in terms of you know, setting up a framework for doing plugins and audio applications, but also some of the more straightforward data structures that, of course, I know that we've got in C++11, but I'll talk a bit more about the standard library uh, shortly. So it has other classes that help us to solve other problems that may be more general purpose and so on. So GUI and audio. These, of course, you know, successfully creating GUI interfaces and so on, and performing audio processes are you know, typically hard tasks, especially when they're done together. I mean, I've used a number of graphic toolkits in the past, and you know, one of the things you can easily get wrong is a coordinate system that doesn't, which works, but isn't sort of intuitive and just works. And juices, as those of you who use juice already will know, it, it just works, it's intuitive. Even if you apply some crazy affine transform to the, to the components, then you click the mouse in the right place and the message comes through to the correct position within the component. So, of course, juice doesn't make these problems go away completely, but it, it, you know, it makes these problems easier. And then, of course, you've got the issue of these two things, the GUI and the audio processing, having to work together in a thread-safe way. And I know that we've got Timo's talk um, tomorrow, I think, talking about uh, leading on from his CPPCon talk, uh, talking more about that. So, I think the, the shorthand is, you know, Juice makes it fast, but it also makes a lot of things easier. And I think this is kind of achieved through a number of means. They're, they're making it easier. I mean, it, it just works. And I think it's worth saying that, again, it just works. Well, if it doesn't, you know, you, it often gets fixed pretty quickly. Certainly if you can give a decent bug report to Jules on the forum or via email. It's usually clear... Well, certainly clear from looking at a class what it does, but it's also pretty straightforward to find a class when you want a certain job done. The other thing that it does, and I think this is especially important for users, uh, newbie users, is getting put off straight away in terms of it doesn't compile. Why doesn't it compile? Or I run it and it crashes. Why does it crash? So Juice catches a lot of the pitfalls when you've done something wrong. Simple stuff is really simple. But again, perhaps the problem of some libraries is that they're too simple and you can't do much more with them. So you know, in the context of teaching uh, in a university, you give students this familiarity with using a particular framework and then they can't actually go off and use it for anything else because it's too simple. Whereas Juice makes things a lot more... Well, uh, Juice can be used in a much more complex way. So you can use Juice as a black box. You don't need to look at the source code apart from the APIs, the headers. But also, you know, complex is possible, and also you can look inside and see how stuff works. You can see all of that beautiful code that Jules has written and sort of follow by his examples. So just some specifics then. I think a lot of it, from, from my personal perspective, and certainly talking to students when they use it, is that the surface level issues are actually quite important for, for learning. Arcane abbreviations and so on can often be off-putting. Juice has got a wide range of features, and of course it's cross-platform, that really helps. You've got GUI features, audio, input-output, network stuff, Mac, Windows, Linux, all those platforms, and, and so on. It's consistent, it's documented, and it's got a style guide as well, which, you know, this is maybe pushing the point a little bit, encourages students to follow this. Well, you have to persuade them to follow a style guide, then they don't really sort of get the reason. And maybe it's for employees as well. I know we talked to some uh, people in the industry that they would like to perhaps get to them to use their, the style guide that Juice uh, follows. But I know that's, there's often internal style guides that maybe conflict with the way that Juice is formatted. But nevertheless, it encourages you to use a style guide of some sort. So in more specifically in terms of initial barriers, uh, I know the standard library is powerful, and certainly with C++11, C++14, and 17 coming up, then we've got some amazing new features. But just looking at, not, I know you don't need to use these things, but a lot of the tutorials, the books, and so on, it's all abbreviations. Immediately that makes things a little bit difficult, because you've got to remember what the abbreviation means rather than just reading a word as it is in Juice. So with Juice, you can get straight in and start uh, making a noise. So 
uh, is just a bit of an example juice code here. So the class, function, argument, and so on, all those names are always consistent. Um, we heard Jules in his talk a moment ago kind of suggesting quite clearly that it agonizes over the name. It isn't just, oh, what should I call it? Oh, I'll call it that and leave it. Uh, it's about getting exactly the right name so that you don't have to look up the documentation every time. It says what it is. It's absolutely clear. Nouns, verbs, and those sort of things are quite clearly used. Very clearly used, sorry. Of course, the internal code formatting is, uh, is clear as well. So understanding how functions work, not just how to use them, is also a useful factor as well. And then we come to the fact that it's pretty much all-encompassing. All I said earlier, and I'll give some examples later, in terms of uh, bringing together Juice with other libraries, but that's not the approach you necessarily want to take, certainly with uh, newbies as well. So it minim completely minimizes the need to have external dependencies on other stuff. Uh, when it has got external dependencies, like Zlib, uh, then they're kind of embedded within the library itself, and you don't need to include them manually. So you can do a whole load of stuff without having to include separate frameworks, libraries uh, as well. So beyond just the things that you might use specifically for audio, like the audio callbacks and audio source player classes that you might have seen demonstrated earlier by Fabian, then there are other things that you'll later on when you're making a more complex app are just there that are written in a way that will work well with audio code as well. Most of our students at UE are Mac-based. We're all Mac-based in the department. Uh, well, not in the department, but in our audio part of the department. But some students have PCs. So the fact that you can actually learn in exactly the same way on a Mac, PC, possibly Linux, it also makes it easier for students to go home with the code and be able to, to learn that way as well. That might seem a trivial aspect, but it's actually quite important that the students don't necessarily have to come into the lab to learn. They might want to learn at home, 4 o'clock in the morning, or whatever. Then we've got the documentation. I mean, writing native code for main operating systems is often quite complex to, to read, certainly for newbies. Again, in addition to learning to write uh, Max objects, which was well documented, I used to uh, get copies of Inside Mac out of the library at my university and then try to translate Pascal into C, uh, and then it would just not work because I'd done it wrong, obviously, because it was hard. But the juice documentation uh, for each class is clear. And often there's a small example if it's needed, not always. Not the, the documentation is not bloated where unnecessary. But you know, you've got little examples that are useful where necessary. And of course, there's a growing set of tutorials on the website as well. There's an introduction to the producer. There's getting used to the component classes, nesting components and so on that are all growing on the, on the website as well. So catching errors and debugging is really, really important. So not only does Juice kind of catch an error with an assertion quite often, often there's not many exceptions that are used in, in Juice. I know that Jules tries to minimize those. But it catches them through assertions quite often or even compile time assertions as well. So you'll you've done something stupid. And obviously the number of times that someone's done something stupid Jules' comment is often a little bit more derogatory when you read the code when you hit it. So here's a good one. Good example. If you forget to resize or uh, set your size of your component, you get uh, not going to look very good if this component has a zero size. So you know, I forgot to resize my component. It hits an assertion as soon as the app runs, tells you what you've done wrong. Obviously, it doesn't tell you which line of your code perhaps needs fixing in this particular case, but it helps narrow it down. Okay. So judicious use of template classes as well. Now I go templates are really useful and metaprogramming's addictive. Once you get the hang of it, it's like, oh yeah, I can solve this problem using metaprogramming. But it does make things harder for newbies to learn. And although Xcode has got a lot better, I certainly remember Xcode 5 not being very good at being able to tell you what the state of your program is when you're using a lot of nested templates. Of course, most of us are audio people here, and certainly my students are all audio students. So the audio features are really important. So you know, being able to develop applications and plugins really quickly is really important. But also that you can operate at either the high level of kind of nested, uh, piecing together graphs of 
high-level audio processing, source players, filters, and so on. But also then you can go drill down into the low level and process sample by sample in the same classes. And that's really helpful to be able to approach it from the, the kind of two different ends. Okay, so one of the things I use Juice for in classes and lectures is producing quick examples. So it's really easy, even you know, in the middle of a, a lecture, to whip open the open, uh, open the introducer or the producer, make a new project, and write an application in you know, a couple of minutes that does something straightforward. So, for example, just I'm not going to actually do that now. By the way, I have pre-written this one, but you know, just playing an audio file. Oh, am I going to confuse the projector by switching video states? So we've got a simple program uh, using the audio app template from the introducer producer. Uh, sort of similar code to what Fabian showed earlier. Uh, there was actually a question that someone asked about what about doing stuff on a background thread because Fabian was actually reading on the audio thread to play the audio. He mentioned the uh, buffering audio source. In fact, the transports, audio transport source that we're using here, that does not only the buffering on the background thread but also does the resampling as well if the file's at a different sample rate from the audio hardware. So there's no error checking here, so it's quite a quick example. It wouldn't be something I'd put into production code, but it'll load this file that's on my disk here and just play it. It's also using the Audio Visualizer class, so it's just going to give us a very basic waveform on screen as well, so we can see what's happening. Actually, no, I forgot to put that in. Have you got audio on that? It's on the next one. The later examples have an audio visualizer. Okay, so throw up a quick example like that, and you know, it's very straightforward. Okay, other simple demos. So, for example, DC offsets, uh, bit depth reduction. Aliasing, so this is not for programmers, but for uh, showing audio artifacts. Then I've got some quick examples here. Uh, these ones do show the waveform very quickly. Uh, I'll skip over DC offset as I've got running over a little bit, but bit crushing for example, so illustrating what happens when you reduce the bit. So this application's got a little slider that you can simulate from 24-bit down to 1-bit. Sounds like 90s glitch stuff. And aliasing. Similar thing, same audio file, but simulating. Oh, this actually sets the sample rate up to 96 kilohertz and then simulates you bringing that sample rate down to uh, something really low. So we can hear the aliasing. Which sounds one of, like one of the... Uh, Aphex Twin albums. <laughs> and finally, the other thing that I use it for is sort of encapsulating other frameworks and so on. So uh, one thing I teach also in addition to Juice is game audio. So one of the applications that I tend to use is I've got a, a Unity app, for example, in Unity 3D, and that just sends messages over a datagram socket. Uh, pick that up in Juice using the datagram socket application uh, uh, classes, and then use the FMOD library, FMOD audio game library, to trigger sounds and so on. So I won't show you an example of that, but I'm happy to show you an example of how that works and the, the small classes I've written to send messages across the network to enable students to kind of just focus on the game audio side of things rather than having to kind of find the line of code within the game code that actually will trigger a sound. So it isolates just the, the particular problem. So all of those things I find you juice, useful for from teaching C++ through to 
you know, just using it to create things that students can use to learn other things about audio. Okay? Sure. Thanks. Um, we have about three minutes for questions, so maybe two or three, if anyone has any questions. Hi, Hi. great talk. Um, since we're all friends, what do you like least about juice? <laughs> we've, already, we've had this conversation already, Jules. So I suppose, in terms of teaching it, I don't think, I think, you know, compared to open frameworks as, or layout engine, then I've had students try to start learning open frameworks and just working out where that mouse has been clicked. I'm sure it's got better more recently, but I remember that being a headache, whereas juices, I just found it... I don't have a problem with that particularly. I think once you've got a very complex interface, then sometimes it can get a bit slow if you're not careful how you uh, render things, and certainly if you're using things like drop shadows. But in terms of kind of basic usage, I can't think of anything actually that really sticks out that I think, oh yeah, by the way, you've got to watch out for that because, yeah, it's a bit broken because I think Jules has fixed most of those things. So... Yeah. Licensing. Oh, Sorry. Oh, actually, for, but, for, but for education, it's, it's not really a problem. I mean... You, those of you paying attention will think, well, yeah, but you're using FMOD, that's a proprietary license. Actually, the, the app I use for that only uses the uh, Juice Core, so it's fine. When's your next book out? Um, probably, well, we can maybe have a conversation about that. I'm not really sure whether a, a, a book is the, perhaps the right platform, so, you know, the things are changing so quickly. Most of the examples still compile with Juice 4, I think, but apart from the look and feel, stuff changed in between me writing it and Juice 2.6 coming out or something like that. But most of the things still compile, but yeah, Juice is going to move on. So I think maybe something more like a, a website and so on. And you know, the tutorials that, that Roly have already got on the website are a really useful resource.